As promised, working on the shutter speed detector enclosure. Welcome to Hack a Week. Currently, I'm working in SketchUp. I like SketchUp, it's quick and dirty and easy. I've also used Onshape online. I don't have any of my own CAD software design programs. A lot of times, I just do this. This is how I get started, just with scratching out stuff on a piece of paper, on graph paper. And then I go into SketchUp and start playing with it. And as I see it and get working with it, I make any design changes, whatever. Basically, this thing is gonna be an upright for the shutter speed detector and it's gonna have a half inch, um, actually a 7 16th or 11 millimeter dowel through this. So two of these will sit on the dowel and slide back and forth. So the idea is you just clip it onto a camera and then you do your thing with a shutter speed, a, hit the shutter and you'll see a readout, um, pretty simple. So I'm just gonna start prototyping as I go, build this one piece, slide it onto the dowel, make sure everything's good with the hole size and all that, and that it's gonna be the right width to balance the camera, a few other factors. So let's print this one. So FYI, just what I do from here is, after I've saved it, um, just select all. I use Control A, S, Control V. I use keyboard shortcuts like crazy. I love keyboard shortcuts. Anyway. Select all, go up to the file menu, you have to have the uh, extension for export STL. This pops up and then you save it somewhere and you save it as I'm calling it an upright. I already saved it once. So there it is. Then you can open it in your slicer program. This is Cura and um, it works okay for me. I like Cura, I have no complaints. Um, once in a while there's a few things that get a little goofy with really intricate parts. Uh, in that case, I'll go to slicer, but this works good for this kind of stuff. Real simple rectilinear shapes. I've got it printing right now on the printer. In fact, it just started right there on my CR 10s. Well, this just came off the printer, these few pieces, and these slide back and forth pretty easily. Um, took a couple of tries to get the whole size just right. The center section is what will support the camera. So the idea is you just drop your camera in here, move this back and forth to get it close to the lens and the film back. Of course, you would do this with the camera open like so. Back here is where all the main electronics will go on a board much smaller than this, but I'm thinking I'll stack it like this probably um, inside of a little box. That little box will live on this side of this upright. You can move it in and out until you get the photo transistor close to the focal plane shutter. And let's see, I'm thinking it'll have to move up and down a bit too. So right now I'm prototyping a piece that will slide around this just to make sure I get it the right size. And I will incorporate that onto a enclosure that will hold all the electronics and the photo transistor and then we'll just have a little wire cable that'll run around the front and over on the front side there'll be another small box that will hold the LED. Making good progress on the box here uh, in SketchUp. I've got this all laid out so the 9 volt battery is going to go in there, the board's going to drop in there, the photo cell will poke out the front of this unit and then these two holes are for those uprights so it'll just slide right on here and slide up and down to adjust to the back of the camera to an optimal position and it just incorporates that right into the box so no need to add anything external the screen will be on the top here on a cover that'll just friction fit over the top of this with a lip that goes around it got a box bottom printing Here's the box top in SketchUp, and that opening right there is for the OLED, and there are four holes on that printed circuit board that are going to correspond to these little 1.5 millimeter pegs. We'll see how they print. Hopefully I can just slide that right down on there. This window lines up with the OLED, and then I can just uh, melt these a tiny bit with a soldering iron, and that should hold it in place. I've got to cut my perf board down to 28 millimeters, so it's going to be um, right on one of these perf lines, right on that one. I just realized you can just snap 
perf board. I forgot about that. So I've got it lined up right on the row of where I want to break it. And I think what I'll do is use my bench anvil and just push on it evenly and break it off. I need some wire for my project. Let's get out the oldie wire box. Ooh, there we go. That's what I need. It's like 24 gauge wire in one, two, three, four, four different colors. This 10K resistor goes between pin four and ground. Now it's just a matter of soldering up the rest of the wires. Let's flick the switch on and see what we got. Watch right here, it should say shutter speed tester. I'm gonna shield this from the bright light. And then let's try shining the flashlight on it real quick. Huh. Oh, there it goes. It works. The top cover's off the printer. I've got four places here that I can mount the uh, OLED with some screws. And out of all of my salvaged little pieces and parts, I've got two really tiny ones here that should work fine. I think I only need to mount this with two. I would do four, but I can't find four screws like this. Two is going to be good enough. Just got to keep it held in place. Let's see what that looks like on the front side. Nice. I did a bit of reconfiguring on things here. Um, many iterations on this project, but that's how prototyping goes. I decided to put the Arduino on a set of header pins. so easier to replace if something goes wrong and uh, I can mount it all up like this got it all wired up OLED display all set the switch the jack for the LED and a new and improved enclosure gotta be at least the tenth one I've done different versions I've got all the holes for uh, mounting things all lined up much better see those little lugs down in there that's where the board mounts that's where the jack mounts and the photo transistor goes in that hole etc etc another little thing i did was in the corners of the cover i did a little cutout to help it pop in place a little easier i realigned all of these mounting points for the oled as i did for the switch Everything should go together much better now. Okay, ready for some assembly here. I've got to put the upright on first. I've got to have the cover off because it's got to clear all of these wires inside. And I want to make sure I don't catch anything the wrong way. All right, that's that. And we can put the cover back on. I love how this just clicks into place now. Let's see, it goes that way. Snaps right in there nicely. And we'll slide this onto the dowel. Got the uh, LED light source here. Let's put that on. And then we're going to run our wire over here, plug it into the jack. And when we turn it on, that should light up. And it does. The display lights up. Okay. Let's get a camera in there and see how it works. So I've got a Pentax K1000 here. I know it's got some shutter issues at the low speeds that are not working the way they should. So let's get the back open here. We're going to get this set up. I'm going to put the LED light source in the front of the camera and point it through. So I'm going to adjust this till it's about centered and the photo transistor, let's get that basically centered in the frame in the back 
And we're going to move this up nice and close to the camera. Same thing at the front. And it's all set, ready for the first test. Okay, we're all set. Get the shutter cocked. Let's turn this on. We can see our little display there. And let's fire the shutter at 1 60th of a second. 151. So close. Let's try some of the slower speeds. Let's go down to 1 8th of a second and see what we get. And it's still reading the same, 151. So the low speed is not working the way it should. This should be one second. And it's basically one fourth of a second. Let's try the higher speeds just for fun. Uh, one five hundredth of a second. That's reading one three oh seven. Let's try one thousand. One four thirty two. So this K one thousand needs a lot of work on the shutter. Well, this has been a really cool little project and I'm definitely going to put this to use with all of my cameras. These things uh, can cost upwards of three or $400. There's some out there for 150, 200. Um, and a lot of them rely on connecting them to a laptop. Maybe they're a little more accurate than this. I don't know, but this will get me definitely in the ballpark and it's just really cool. It's been a lot of fun engineering the enclosure this time around on this video and um, SketchUp is kind of my go-to it's quick and dirty it's not the best CAD program out there um, but it works it gets the job done and if you uh, work with it a while you pick up all the little tricks on how to get things done so thanks a lot for watching I will put links down in the description area where the pages are for all of this stuff on my hack a week website I'll probably upload these STL files to Thingiverse, and the link to that will also be on the website, as well as the donate button. So if you like the videos, you want to support Hack a Week, please donate. The link is down there. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.